It's time for Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. You are either going to love this or your head's going to explode or both. This Mm. is Wretched Radio, KKLA. It is a Christian radio station in Los Angeles, California. Several high-profile preachers are on there, including one Alistair Begg. Uh, We like Alistair Begg, and that is why... We were very excited to see a debate happening at the Reagan Presidential Library hosted by radio talk show host on the Salem Network, Hugh Hewitt, with Dennis Prager also on Salem Radio. Hmm. Ask a Jew, ask a Gentile. That was the premise. Hugh is the moderator. And this is so wonderful and frustrating to watch all at the same time. What's wonderful? Alistair Begg. Oh, he's like he's like a, a Scottish dog on a bone. That maybe was that was maybe my Swedish accent. I can't keep the two countries straight, no apparently. One can. No, I think he's that like was, a Scotty. Yeah, a West like Highland Terrier. Lady in the Tramp. You were about as accurate as that Scotty's <laughs> Scottish accent. <laughs> well, you've got kids still in that age. It's been a while for me to know if that is a true statement. No, I don't not. make so my kids watch that. I will, tr- <laughs> I will trust you on that. And the frustrating side was Dennis Prager just breaking our hearts. Every evangelical loves Dennis Prager when he speaks on social issues, political issues, his insights, his demeanor, so powerful. And yet when he talks theology, he can just make you bonkers. Here is Dennis Prager with his opening comments at Ask a Jew. Ask a Gentile. I don't have an issue with people who believe Jesus is the Messiah. The Jewish issue has, all, has never been the Messianic issue. Jews have believed that various Jews at different times have been the Messiah. They have never been, they've never created or been ostracized. They've never created a different movement or a different religion or been ostracized. The issue for Jews was the divinity claim that Christianity ah. made, not the Messianic claim. If the only claim people made about Jesus was he's the Jewish Messiah, then they would have been Jews for Jesus, literally. Jews who believed in, in Jesus as the Messiah. It's the, it's the Trinitarian and, and uh, divinity claims that caused the creation of, of a second religion. Mm, well, yes, it's not really a second religion per se, but Dennis Prager basically saying, look, If you guys didn't say that Jesus was God, I got no problem with him being the Messiah. Here's the problem. On the left side of the book, which Dennis adheres to, that book claimed that the Messiah would be divine. Where do you get that from, Todd? Well, I'm opening up my Bible to Isaiah and chapter 52 and chapter 53. This is the gospel that was preached 700 years before Jesus Christ was born describing exactly what this Messiah would be like, and it includes claims of divinity. It starts in chapter 52 and verse 13. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. All right? So the servant is going to be a man. The verse continues. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. Hmm... That's no normal man. That's a special kind of man. It goes on to describe the marring of this fellow. Of course, it gets into chapter 53. He was despised and rejected, bruised, crushed, smitten, afflicted. He was ground to powder, so disfigured you couldn't tell that he was a human being. He was taken from prison and from judgment, for he was cut off from the land of the living, and they made his grave with the wicked, prediction after prediction after prediction fulfilled by Jesus Christ. Verse 10, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him and put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, and he shall prolong his days. What? How can you die, be cut off, and yet see your seed. The only way that can happen is if you are divine and you are eternal. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death. So he dies and gets an inheritance. He gets the spoils of his victory. 
these are claims of eternality. These are claims of divinity. Furthermore, when you go to the New Testament, Jesus himself made those claims. So when Dennis states, I don't have a problem with Messiah Jesus, as long as you don't say that he was divine, then you don't understand what Messiah Jesus taught, that he is indeed divine. I am. I am the door. I am the bread. I am the living. Before Abraham was, I am All all statements of divinity equating himself with God. The Father and I are one. And so I'm afraid, with all due respect to Dennis, whom I truly like, I'm not buying his tale. Because he doesn't understand, apparently, what Jesus actually said about himself. And I don't see Dennis actually living out what he's claiming. If, If he believes, then, that Jesus is the Messiah, it's just the divine part, then he should just say to us Christians, look, I just don't buy your divinity claims, but... Thumbs up on the Messiah business, but he doesn't do that. Here's where it starts to get good. Alistair Begg responding to Dennis Prager, and you are going to notice something in this presentation. Ask a Jew, ask a Gentile. There could be all kinds of questions that get asked, but where does Alistair Begg, like a Scottish dog on a bone, keep the subject on Jesus Christ? Well, you know, when you read the gospel records and you see the reaction of the Jew to the claims of Jesus um, and the disappointment that they felt, the clearer he became, it would seem that they anticipated that when the Messiah came, everything, as Dennis says, would be put to rights. So the oppression, for example, of the Roman authorities would be taken care of. Uh, They would be established in their own land, if you like, they would be secure and so on. And so that expectation, which I don't think was the right expectation, was not met in Jesus. He begins with Jesus, he talks about Jesus some more, and then he ends with Jesus. When John the Baptist steps forward, he says of this this man, this Galilean carpenter, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world so that the expectation of Judaism into the very heart of the Pentateuch is that in this sacrificial system, there will eventually be a sacrifice that out-sacrifices all the previous sacrifices. And Jesus steps forward and he says, I actually am that one. The reaction, of course, on the part of those who heard him speak was to crucify him. You know, I I hate to be critical of Alistair Begg, but his Scottish accent is terrible. (laughs) Nevertheless, he is not going to relent despite everything that Dennis Prager says. Alistair Begg just keeps banging away. Prepare for some heartache from Dennis Prager. I believe that God wants the world to come to Mount Sinai. So to me, I have long ago believed that Jesus was the vehicle of my God, the God of Sinai, to bring the world to Sinai. Mm. The Jews, as it were, needed help. (laughs) We haven't done a great job bringing the world to Sinai. But Jesus did. Ah, Completely backwards. Jesus doesn't bring people to Sinai. Sinai brings people to Jesus. The laws are a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Christ isn't a schoolmaster to bring us to the laws. The laws are a mirror, a curb, and a guide. The laws don't save. The laws condemn. As you're going to hear, Dennis Prager, he is a big fan of the laws of Moses. Why were they given? To silence the mouth, to bring the whole world guilty before God. The laws were not given to save. The laws were given to demonstrate we need saving. Then when we get saved, the laws kick in. Think for a moment, if you will, about the exodus, which I am sure Dennis Prager believes actually happened. Which came first, deliverance or the laws? God redeemed, he rescued his people out of Egypt. Then he gives the laws. That's the order of affairs. We are rescued, then we do good. We can't do good before we are saved. Nobody does good. No, not one. Alistair Begg, I'm telling you, this guy, 
whatever the, whatever they put in his Scottish coffee, it just kept him so focused. I would actually challenge what he has just said, that the um, purpose of the Bible as it unfolds is clearly not for the world to be brought to Sinai, but for the world to be brought to Christ. Amen. And that the temple in Jerusalem, which uh, represented both the presence of God and the ongoing plans of God, um, is no longer the place to which men and women are coming, because Jesus infuriated the Jewish people of his day by announcing to them, you know, you could tear down this temple and in three days it will be built again. And they said, it's taken so long to build a temple. He said, but you don't understand. I am the temple. Beautiful. More Prager versus Big next on Wretched Radio. 